Well, mowing season is upon us again here, which means hot weather and overworking some of our machines and just, you know, trying to get done as fast as we can. And what we got here is a cylinder head off of a Briggs & Stratton V-Twin. This was off of a old Intec, but um, the reason we kept this was to kind of show you a pretty common problem that we get with uh, not just Briggs & Stratton engines, but any of them could actually do this. And we've seen it on Kawasaki's, we've seen it on zero turns, you know, commercial zero turns. Actually, John Deere commercial zero turns, not just the residential cheap craftsman stuff and things like that. So it can happen to any of them, but at any rate, so you're... Uh, your engine's not running right and you know it just sounds like maybe the timing's off or something like that or there's just something wrong with one of the cylinders or if it's a single cylinder it just doesn't start at all so you pull the valve cover off and you find a, a bent push rod you know down in your area here for the push rods and you go and uh, some people will go buy a new push rod and they'll put it in there and they want to bend right away they don't realize what's going on what happens is the valve guide, which we can get a good look at it right here. You can see in that spring there, the valve guide will actually let loose from the casting and slide up. Now what this does is when the push rod is pushing on this side of the rocker arm, the cam pushes the push rod up, lifts the push rod up, which pushes on the rocker arm, and it can't move. You can see there this valve cannot budge it's the same thing as having a bent valve where it just will not go down at all won't move and that is because inside there oops, inside here your rocker arm is contacting with the valve guide or your uh, your valve seat retainer is actually contacting with that valve guide that moved out of place and weren't allowed to go down so the weakest link is going to give out in the system so when that push rod is trying to push up on this rocker arm and the rocker arm's got nowhere to go, that push rod's just going to bend up. You can see over here on this one, this is what it should like inside inside there. You know, just the valve stem sticking up through. So when the push rod comes up, pushes this rocker arm, the valve moves up and down freely. There again, you can see the valve guide is stuck in there. Lift it up in there, nowhere for that to go. Okay, we got our valve springs out of the way here to get a better look at what, what causes these push rods to bend. And you can see the push rod will be back here at this side. It's going to it's gonna lift up on this rocker arm, which is going to push down on the valve. But the problem is, this rocker arm can only push so far until it hits that valve guide. And you can see this is the valve guide right here that moved up out of the cylinder head. Over here you can see on the intake side... Um, we've got the, the valve, actual valve stem sticking up through, moves freely, and the valve guide is down where it needs to be. So, <clears throat> that's what causes these bent push rods, you know, they don't just bend for no reason. Um, let me see if I can push this valve up through here a little more. Yeah, see that's all the more movement you're going to get on this valve compared to the intake valve. You know, the intake valve can come down pretty far uh, I can't get there we go yeah and that's all the more about move you can get from that valve on the exhaust side now the whole reason this happens is because the engine overheats and this guide lets loose in the casting slides up on out of there as he said we've seen this with Kohler's Kawasaki's Briggs you know it doesn't matter what engine it is they're only designed to stand so much heat you know before something's got to give out so what really causes these to overheat is if you would have a broken fan on your flywheel or uh, your cooling fins. Right in here, you know, you get the mice in there and they build a nest, pack that full and the air can't travel around there to cool this thing down. That's what's going to do it. That's why it's always a good idea every year, you know, clean that, clean that area out underneath your shroud. Here you can see down in there, you can see that this... This exhaust valve guide is way back up in there, and the other one is still sitting there where it should be. See if you look in there, you can't even see that valve guide. Crazy. But 
yep that's a way to prevent this from happening um, if it does happen and you have a valve guide come loose like that especially on one of these um, Briggs Intex you know it, it's the head's done you know you can try to put it back in there and peen it you know around there in place and it might get you through a little while but the only way you're going to have this thing running right is to just replace that completely replace the whole cylinder head um, and get the whole kit you know it comes with everything in it and that's the same way if it's a Kawasaki, Kohler, Honda, whatever. Just replace that cylinder head. You know, no point in messing with that. You already know that the valve guide is moved. You already know that the the cylinder head is damaged because it was overheated so bad. Um, Why well, take the chance of it? You're going to be taking it apart, you know, anyway. So just go ahead and uh, just replace that whole thing. And that way you know for sure what's in there. And, and uh, you've, you've learned your lesson, hopefully. So, hope you guys learned something here. Um, again, when you're getting into mowing season, make sure to keep those keep those cooling fins clean. Keep them mouse nests out of there. And uh, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe and keep checking back for more. Thanks for watching.